Now, from Wish TV, your local news source, this is All Indiana Politics. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of All Indiana Politics on this Sunday. We start again this week with the race for Indiana's Secretary of State. Over the past few weeks, we've talked with Republican candidate Diego Morales and Democrat Destiny Wells. There is a third name on the ballot, Libertarian Jeff Moore. Here's uh, our Garrett Burquist with him. Jeff, why are you running for Secretary of State? Come on, Garrett. Uh, I'm running for Secretary of State because I want your voice to be counted. I want you to have a receipt for your vote so that you can point to it and track it just like a package and see that it was received, counted, and then audited. I want the same for me, and I want that for you. So building off of that, do you believe that all the counties in Indiana should go to a hand-marked paper ballot as most states do? I believe all counties should have a paper backup of some form or another. Uh, currently we have a VVPAT machine which basically prints a copy of the, of the vote for the county to keep. But I want you as the voter to have your own printed copy that you can take home with you and go online, look it up, and track your vote that way. I've spoken to a couple of Republican strategists and they've expressed some concern that you might peel off some votes from Diego Morales in particular and effectively hand this election to Destiny Wells. How do you respond to those concerns? The only wasted vote, as a Hoosier, as, a, as my neighbor, the only time you waste your vote is when you keep voting for the problems that you don't like. So if you're sick and tired of the brokenness of our system, of a political system that's dysfunctional and uh, supermajority, and the only time you're going to waste that vote is if you keep voting for more of it. Although we we certainly will hear from voters who say, well, I would like to vote for a third party candidate because I share those concerns, but I, I'm worried that all I'm going to end up doing is putting the other party in power. I'm just wasting my vote. There's no such thing as a wasted vote if you vote for what you want. What do you believe sets you apart from the other candidates in this race? We've got they, the two major parties, but we also have several writing candidates as well. That's right. So the good thing, the thing that we like to see is lots of options. I want more options for you on your ballot. And part of that is having a libertarian option, but also to encourage other parties and even single issue parties. And part of that longer term is to work with the General Assembly to reform our uh, campaign finance laws and to make it easier and more accessible for other parties to get access to the ballot. And so Right now, one of the most important things that we can do is to have to rebalance the center of politics. We have a two-party system that has with a supermajority single-party government, and that's like being on a two-legged stool. And the Libertarian Party, through this ballot access race, has the opportunity to become a third leg of a stool here in Indiana and recenter power. So the benefit of that is that all parties will be more responsive to you, the voter, so that way when you call, when you have a concern, when you send an email, you're more likely to get a response because because when government fears the people, there is liberty. You mentioned you called this ballot access race. Of course, with the Secretary of State's race, this will determine if the Libertarian Party remains on the ballot in future elections. Does that up the ante, in your opinion? Does that put additional pressure on you as a candidate? There's always pressure uh, for the ballot access race. So this is all written into state law. It's the true for all parties in Indiana. Um, the two major parties, the Democrats and Republicans, write these laws into law by themselves. And so they have one set of rules for them, and they have a different set of rules for all other parties. And the threshold for gaining ballot access is harder for other parties. But at the same time, um, the rules are the same for anyone seeking access uh, to ballot access. So right now, uh, under law, at 2% uh, or more, that party's candidates get access to the general election. At 10% or more, that party's candidates get access not only to the general election, but also to the primary election. And as libertarians, we've held uh, general election ac access consistently since 1994, and we are on track to get 10% uh, or better, and that will gain us access to the primary elections for the first time. The Democrat in this race, Destiny Wells, has accused the Republican, Diego Morales, of being a 2020 election denier. Morales has denied this. What do you think? Is Diego Morales an election denier? I like to look at the facts, and Diego Morales was interviewed uh, willingly by Steve Bannon back in January of 2022. The video is online, uh, and if you can't find it on Rumble on your own or through Google, then please send uh, a message to my campaign at info at and I'll be happy to send you a link. But 
In his own words, in this video recording interview with Steve Bannon, Diego Morales says he is a MAGA candidate, he is the America First candidate. And those two things um, in common understanding means that he pledges allegiance to one person and not to a process of election integrity. What do you make of the controversy over Morales' service record in particular? You, Wells, and Morales have all released your military service records in, con in connection with this. Correct. Um, national service is a matter of honor. It's a matter of pride uh, for nearly the 1% of Americans who do participate and do serve in our military. And so when there are questions about that record, um, it's incumbent upon anyone to come forward and share and document. And so when somebody tries very hard to hide his or her record, it doesn't speak well for why they're doing that. Now, one other question, uh, Wells, for example, has said that the state has a very serious turnout problem. What, if you are elected, what would you try to do to increase voter turnout? Voter turnout is about voter trust. And voter trust is also about options on the menu. If you go to a restaurant with only one item on the menu and it's nothing you want to eat, would you go to that restaurant? The answer is probably not. So what will turn out voters is to give them more options on their ballot and to give them greater trust in their elections process. And I'm working on all of those things by having receipts and audits so that way we all have greater trust in the process, but also to give um, greater ballot access not only to libertarians but to all parties uh, through reformation of the process and to make it easier for more parties and more candidates to get access to the ballot that will give voters more options. Our community is not as simple as left and right, blue or red. We are a tapestry of people and many different issues and concerns. Let's get more candidates and causes on your ballot so that you have more choices. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Audits. Audits are critical to our election process. Right now we have one organization, VSTOP, the Voting uh, Systems Technical, Technical Oper Oversight Program, that is auditing itself in grade school we would look back uh, at after a test and pass our test to the student next to us. Somebody else has to grade us. If we grade ourselves, we are subject to bad incentives. So here we have one organization that is in charge of auditing itself. What I'm calling for is an independent audit and to do so for all 92 counties, not just five or 10 in this cycle, but for all 92 counties, and to do that before the elections are certified. Jeff Maurer, thank you for joining us. Garrett, pleasure. Uh and you can find all of our Secretary of State's interviews by looking for the All Indiana Politics section on our website, wishtv.com. All right, coming up, Indiana's best political team joins us to talk to Secretary of State's race and potential bombshell allegations that have so. What's that? Oh, okay. Well, that's that's good. Gentlemen. Good afternoon. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy Fall Friday. It sounds or feels like. Yes. Drew, are you ready to go? Back from the dead, y'all. Yeah, man. What's going to happen this weekend, you think, before we get rolling here? Colts. Do you trust anything that they do? No, I don't. Come on. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's like, I hate to say this, but it, it, it's so much like Indiana basketball. You have so yep. much hope every year. Yep, every year. And then they just, they just let you down. All right, guys. Oh, that's bad. Don't That's fucking do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is gonna be a good one, fellas. Let's 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 get going here. Tom, are you okay? Can you give us a mic check? Yeah, we did one. You did a mic check already? Yeah. Okay, good.
Welcome back to All Indiana Politics on this Sunday as we welcome back two members of Indiana's best political team, Democrat Drew Anderson and Republican Tom John. Good to see you both. We have a lot to get to today. We'll start by talking about those allegations that surfaced on Friday. Two women claiming Republican Secretary of State candidate Diego Morales sexually harassed them. Before we get to you, fellas, I want to show you part of the statement here, okay? So the claims he says being made against me are false, and I unequivocally deny all of them. The women who will not reveal their identity cannot corroborate their stories. They have neither documentation nor sources to substantiate their defaming comments. He goes on to say the falsities stem from 15 years ago and were not brought forward until now, being 39 days out from an election. The timing clearly politically motivated. That is what Diego Morales is saying about this. Drew, I'll go to you first on this one, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, I think at the end of the day, uh, my heart is out for those uh, to those women who experienced uh, uh, that those uh, that, those horrible events because uh, you know so many uh, women across the country, including Indiana, have been put in that situation. Not just women, also men. And I think if anything, uh, it's a shame that this these allegations were published in a gossip column and not actually treated with the severity and the seriousness that it deserves. And when it comes to the uh, Diego statement and when it comes to the whole situation itself, let's learn more, let's hear more from these women. Let's hope that they are brave enough to come forward and to share their story more and to share their names. And then let's also look at what this means for this race, because this isn't the first time Diego has been in a scandal. And in fact, he's been in one pretty consist consistently since June. Tom, your reaction? Well, the allegations are extraordinarily troubling. And I think there should be some looking into it by, and the question too. Obviously, that's what we run into in all these new cases, and that's the troubling thing with them, is your years later, and who is the authority that's able to do it? Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's incumbent upon the Republicans to determine what's going on and incumbent upon our voters to decide what, how they feel about it. To Drew's mm -hmm. point, does it hurt the credibility that it was part of a gossip sheet? I, I'm, I, so, I mean, Abdul Hakeem Shabazz, you know, full disclosure, is a good friend of mine. Me long too. Time reporter in the state and yes he approaches things differently but he's somebody who in my experience has tended to be a credible source and i'm not ex I, I don't have any details of what was behind uh all of his reporting but i, I think the mere fact that his uh his disclaimer on his uh cheat sheet is what it is yeah. is not necessarily something that means it should be this to, to Tom's point, I mean, Drew, uh, I know Abdul pretty well as as well, and I don't think yeah. he would be reporting this if, if he didn't source it and, and, and think it was accurate. I mean, I've worked with Abdul for 10 years, and I think at the end of the day, as much as I like him as a person, the fact that he threw this into a column, a gossip column, when he has those disclaimers, shows that he was a little reckless here. But let's put that aside. Let's actually look at who these allegations are against, and it's against someone that uses campaign money to buy new cars for himself, who literally misleads people on his own biography, and at the end of the day, has an extremist agenda that's gonna hurt voters and their access to the polls. So, you know, this is who it's about, and let's let these allegations play out and let the let media like Wish TV fact check it and, and corroborate them if it happens. But this is, these allegations are about someone who literally has a long history of fudging the facts, fudging the truth, and fudging who he is. And that should be alarming to any Hoosier voter. Tom, react to those, those allegations about, about Diego Morales' past, aside from these allegations. <clears throat> well, I mean, many of these, they are what they are. I've seen them reported. I don't have any particular insight to them, so it's difficult to comment one way or the other. I mean, at the end of the day, like so many things in politics and life, it needs a full vetting 
and then the authority, which in this case is the voters, the final authority will have to make the decision. Okay, well, we're, we're about 40 days out now, gentlemen, so we'll see what happens, right? Uh, and maybe more to come here. Thank you very much. We'll stay with us. We'll talk with you guys about other topics coming up here after the break on All Indiana Politics. All right, guys. Um, by the way, hey. there seems to be a lot there. But it's just yeah, Phil, and I'm sorry if it, if it looked like I was coming off hard on duel, but no, I, it's just it's reckless. Fine. It's yeah. reckless. Yeah. I don't no, like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I mean, TMI, but I was me too in DC, and that shit that shit hangs over you. You yeah. want people to review? you. No, so. I get it, man. I get it. I'm yeah. really having a hard time hearing. You. Are you? Yeah. Well, can you hear me now? Tom? That's better. Okay. Yeah. I'll try to, I'll, I'm usually, I've never heard anyone not being able to hear me before. So I'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Phil, well, it's, 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 so it's kind of hard to, I know. Other than, <laughs> except for my wife when she doesn't want to, you know. Me, but, um, so we're going to talk about Biden here and the Walorski stuff. And we, we get into, I we, mean, we just open and free here, guys, whatever we want to talk about. Have, have fun flaying me about the Biden stuff. No, guys. I don't think, you know what? I, you know, here's the thing, Drew. He messed up. It's my issue is the, like, the, the, the reaction from um, Corinne Jean, uh, Jean Pierre. Like, just say, hey, he messed up. He's got a lot going on. Um, he feels terrible about it. We have the family coming in on Friday. You know, it's it's then she just kept digging a hole. That was my issue with it. You know, I mean, yeah, between between us guys in this room, yeah. please. But yeah, that was the horrible, horrible response. So yeah, yeah. I I think at the end of the day, like he didn't say anything negative about Jackie. No. He just had a slip. Like, it's, come it's, on. And even even her brother talked to the New York Post and said, "It is what it is. He it's fine. He's it, you know, I mean, he made a mistake. You know, I mean, let's yeah. come on. But yeah, all right, we'll we'll get rolling here, guys." Welcome back to All Indiana Politics. Drew Anderson and Tom John still with us now. Let's talk now about uh, President Biden and the, the backlash after 
this moment that we're about to show you at a conference on hunger in Washington this week. Look. And I want to thank all of you here for including bipartisan elected officials like Representative Governor, Senator Braun, Senator Booker, Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was. The president apparently tried to welcome Indiana Congresswoman Jackie Walorski at an event. Of course, Walorski died in a car crash nearly six weeks ago. Tom, I know Republicans, including the state GOP chairman, Kyle Hupfer, jumped all over the gaff. Is it justified? Well, unfortunately, this is another indication of the failings of our president. And it should concern you that somebody misses a detail this significant to our state, to our community. You're there to honor this person, and you don't realize why you're honoring them. And that calls into question your fitness for other things, I think. I mean, I do I do think that's something that's a problem and something that is a matter of discussion, particularly come in the 2024 election. I get that, but is the reaction justified? Um, well, it, it did. So I could not hear what that what you played just now. Unfortunately, okay, well, that was, so I can't what we played was we played exactly. the moment that he that he that he the misstep. So you know what, um, Drew, we'll go to you on this. Your reaction. Okay. Tom, just so you know, we're, play we're playing the soundbite from him at the podium, okay? So when it happened, that's what we're playing. Okay. Yeah, don't leave during the SOT. We'll, we'll come back to you. Welcome back to All Indiana Politics. Drew Anderson, Tom John, still with us. Let's talk now about President Biden and the, the backlash after this moment at a conference on hunger in Washington this week. Look. And I want to thank all of you here for in, including bipartisan elected officials like Representative Governor, Senator Braun, Senator Booker, Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I, I didn't think she was. The president apparently tried to welcome Indiana Congresswoman Jackie Walorski at an event. Of course, Walorski died in a car crash nearly six weeks ago. Tom, I know Republicans, including the state GOP chairman, Kyle Hupfer, jumped all over the gaff. Is that justified? Well, I think it did. It calls into question, if you aren't aware of a situation such as somebody's passing who you're attempting to honor, I think it calls into question his mental faculties. And I, I don't say that lightly, and I don't say it to be, uh, you know, frankly, mean. But when you're talking about the person who's the leader of the free world and they have these sorts of repeated gaffes where they're shaking hands with air, where they're welcoming people who have passed, that, that calls into question for 2024 whether that's somebody that you want to have uh, in the position of president of the United States. So you're okay with some of the reaction from within the Republican Party, even though her own brother said he, he forgave the president for making the mistake? Well, forgiveness is different than the political discussion of your fitness for of duty. Uh, as you see in politics, oftentimes, I mean, there's a lot of hyperbole that, frankly, I think we'd be better off without, and that's on both sides of the aisle. But hyperbole seems to be what our system now yeah. pays attention to what our voters pay attention to and we can have the discussion about whether we should be having more uh you know historic lincoln douglas type political debates but that's not the world we live in unfortunately drew your reaction to all of this i mean hyperbole that's the key word and the republicans overreacted i think at the end of the day uh joe biden made a misstep he made a gaffe Joe Biden has a career's worth of gaffes dating all the way back to when he was a first senator. 
you know, in his late twenties, early thirties. And if we're questioning the mental fitness of him just because he made a slip up, which by the way, Jackie's husband forgave him. Yeah. Then let's also let let's also we're all old enough to remember the fact that Donald Trump tried to claim that Alabama was a part of Georgia. So, like, come on, let's not be stu- let's not be silly here. It was an honest mistake. Let's move on. And instead of and let's 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 stop trying to play those low rung political points that. Unfortunately, Kyle Huffner just can't, cannot not take a swing. So that's him. To Tom's point, though, Doug, it, it seems like these gaffes, uh, we all know that going back, he was, he's even admitted to having them. Is that really a good selling point, though? I mean, well, Philly, you called me Doug. I'm Drew. You know that. Yeah. Uh, but see, there you go. We're talking about gaffes. But I think at the end of the day, Joe Biden has had gaffes his whole career, just like every politician, just like every human. It's very human to make mistakes, yep. especially as innocent mistakes as to accidentally forgetting that someone has tragically passed away when you are running the free country 24 seven. And especially the fact at a time where he is monitoring a very strong category for hurricane that wiped out Western Florida. Yeah, he's got, he's, listen, he's president of the United States, very busy man, but. Exactly. I want to get to something else here because I only have so much time. The White House did seem to stumble in its response after seeing, mm -hmm. seeming to kind of double down on their defense. Wouldn't it have been better from a communication standpoint to say what you're saying now, it was a mistake. He feels terrible. Let's, let's move on. He's got the family coming on Friday. You know, Mm -hmm. he's apologized. It seemed like it got worse the more they tried to spin it. I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, the press secretary is actually someone who is a friend of mine, and I know her pretty well. Uh, some offices take different directions uh, depending on the situation, and that's the that's the you know direction they chose. And I'm not going to criticize that because, like I said, they had 20 other things on their plate, so that was their decision. Uh, it doesn't, you know, honestly, I think it doesn't change the fact that he didn't uh, once again didn't say anything negative about. The former congresswoman is just a slip up and i'm not going to criticize their their answer on yeah. something uh, something as innocent as that let's talk about more Tom, i'll let you respond to that the, the response on all of this from the democrats go go ahead tom I, I think it's telling frankly that the white house reacted in the way it did because if it was simply a mistake, then don't you just move on with it and <laughs> say it was a mistake to your point. And I think it's telling that they're sensitized to there are concerns and I think potentially legitimate concerns about the president's mental faculties. Okay, okay, that, that answer alone just doesn't hold water for the fact that there was administration before the Biden administration that literally defended the the former president on every lie that he made including the crowd size of his inauguration so that is literally the silliest response i've ever heard on this Uh, show quickly respond this discussion is going to continue as long as uh president biden is president and you know the fact is this is a moment, and people are left to draw from it what they choose. But We're out of time, gentlemen. Good to see you. Point. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Perfect. Good to see you both. Sorry Let's go about the technical today. Let's do it. Yeah. Talk to you soon, okay? See you guys. Bye.
Thank you for joining us for All Indiana Politics this week. We'll see you back here next weekend at 930 on Sunday. Have a great rest of your week.